Hi, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're with Julio from Spirit Arts. He is a teacher in Tai Chi, Qigong, Kung Fu, meditation, and Taoist practices. And he actually gives retreats all over Europe. And he also gives online classes. And he trained at the Five Immortals Temple for a long time. And that's in China. So that's pretty cool. And so today we're going to be talking about Qigong. So let's start with maybe, you know, if you could explain a little bit what is Qigong to everyone. Okay. Well, first of all, welcome everyone. And thank you very much, Brittany, for having me here. It's really a pleasure to be part of this beautiful project. So yes, uh, first of all, Qigong is a Chinese practice, a very ancient one. Um, of course, there are different uh, ideas about how ancient, but that's not the important part for today. And uh, yes, the name Qigong literally simply means energy work. Qi is energy and gong can be translated as work or also as skill. So simply it is that practice which aim to build this skill, this ability to actively work with energy, with the energy from our body, from our own energetical field and from the energy of the nature that is surrounding us. And yeah, of course, there are many methods, different methods which use this energy from different purposes. Some are more martial, some are more medical for the health and longevity, and some are more spiritual, so for the self-investigation of our inner world and of the universe. So yeah, that would be a brief, you know, general idea about the the Qigong universe. And so why should people practice Qigong? Uh, does uh, it bring uh, something in everyday life, uh, health benefits? Why should we be doing it? Well, yes, uh, that's a very good question, Brittany, because of course it has uh, countless benefits, which uh, is difficult to list in an exhaustive way. Of course, it is very beneficial for your health, uh, not only for the physical health, but of course, uh, for your mental and emotional health. Uh, and it's a great tool to, create, to bring balance and stability and clarity in our own life. And um, of course, uh, different people will practice Tai Chi and Qigong for different reasons. So it is very important also that I always ask, I always reply when people ask me the purpose of this practice, I always tell people, well, what is the purpose for you practicing? And because this is very personal, you know, some person maybe want to uh, heal a particular injury or problem that they have been facing or uh, face a certain issue that is uh, troubling them in their uh, life, a certain challenge, or maybe they want to explore uh, the energy world become healers because there's also this important part of qigong that enables you and uh, empowers you as a, as, a, as a therapist so it's very powerful from, on that point of view or simply because you want to explore inside of yourself and you have questions and you have curiosity and you have this drive you know so depending on on your particular goal also your practice will be different and it is important to to know why we are doing to then direct our efforts in a more efficient and direct way. Um, you said it empowers you. So how does it do that? Um, well, the example uh, that uh, my master Li Shifu uh, would uh, sometimes give, it is like if we are a, a light bulb, you know, you can have light bulbs that can hold 50 watts, or a hundred watts, or so much more than that. And so depending on how much energy capacity you can hold, then the amount of work you can do changes. So um, what would you use this greater amount of energy for? Well, first of all, to change the quality of vibration of your own field. And when you do so, you can bring yourself to a whole new level and consequently experience life from a whole new level, from a whole new point of view. And then, of course, the more power, the more energy you have, the more you will be able to do active work. 
to shift, to move things in, in your inner universe, in the outer universe, in your life. If you are a healer, also in the, in the energy field of other people. So of course, more power, more strength in our energy field is enabling us more possibilities for us to explore. That's yeah. really interesting. Um, yeah. And since it gives us all this energy uh, for you, does it work on our longevity as well? How does it affect it? Yeah. Yeah, of course. It is, I mean, longevity is one of the main aspects in Taoism. It is very highly regarded uh, as, a, as a virtue, as a, as a possibility, because, uh, well, life is considered very important, very precious gift we should cherish and uh, and you know value it as much as possible and uh, and so it has developed in many ways to preserve and uh, improve our health so the general i would say the most central uh, concept in in this aspect of longevity from the chinese medicine point of view is a simple idea that all issues are related to some kind of obstruction or blockage in the flow of our energy so the more uh, the system where the energy travels through in our body is unobstructed, the more the body will be naturally able to rebalance itself, uh, recover itself, and put everything in its place. So simply, there are many Qigong methods who aim simply at this, to remove, to or find, first of all, of course, individuate, uh, and then understand and unlock, remove, certain energy blockages and consequently this uh, increases uh, the possibility of our body to regenerate and fix itself in a sense and this can happen you know at any level at the level of the organs of the bones uh, and also on a more energetical level and even mental or emotional so yes if you if you see in china uh, when i went there one of the most uh, impressive things was definitely to observe how real and how tangible this longevity uh, thing is over there because it is you have for sure uh, seen the same uh, it is really inspiring to see all these elderly so lively so uh, fresh going out exercising dancing taking care of their bodies and uh, yeah they sometimes are 80 or 90 and they look you know 30, 40 years younger, and it's so amazing, so unbelievable. So definitely, Qigong practice has a lot to offer on this aspect, for sure. Um, you, you were talking about, you know, um, our channels being uh, obstructed, uh, blocked. Mm -hmm. What is it that in our society causes, uh, what is it that we do in our daily life that causes these blockages in our channels of energy? Okay, uh, so that's a very big question um, and a very philosophical one in the end. Um, well, of course, it can be many, many things. Uh, I think that when the, the certain, there is a certain type of energy that uh, in a certain way we are not really able to handle or to deal with, then we tend to uh, repress it, block it, turn away from it in a certain way. And then this energy uh, tends to accumulate and sometimes uh, create uh, blockages, create problems to also the nearby uh, parts of the body. And uh, simply because it is somehow too much for us. And so in the practice, a lot is simply going back to open again, this part that we have closed, that we have pushed on the side, um, and even the simple fact of being able to look at it sometimes is enough for healing to occur, um, especially when there is a traumatic experience that can be, you know, even an injury for the body. And the recovery uh, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of care, a lot of effort, and it can seem overwhelming. And sometimes we just feel, okay, no, it's too much for me to handle. And we just leave it there in a certain sense. Um, so I think, uh, yes, uh, just trying, having the patience to look and to observe and to understand what it is that, that is, that needs more care and more love inside of us. It's, uh, 
is the most important part really of the work uh, for healing. Yeah. Um, and for feeling energy, um, yeah. how did, um, how did you start feeling it? When did it, yeah. was it just Qigong? Was it other practices you were doing? How did this all happen when you first started feeling this, this energy flow through you? Yes. Um, yes. This is a very uh, nice thing for me to remember because it was a very inspiring, a very beautiful moment in my life. Uh, when I first uh, started practicing, I was 18 years old, more or less at that time. And at the same time, I started to read a few books about meditation. And some friend of mine happened to go to a Tai Chi class, so I just joined them. And uh, yeah, we were doing some basic uh, Qigong uh, standing meditation. And um, after a few classes, I already started to feel a little bit of this energy between the hands doing the standing meditation position. And, uh, you know, it is something that is pretty accessible for many people. Some people, even at the first class, are able to feel this, uh, you know, these sensations in the hands. And for me, as, as a young person, this was just so exciting, so amazing that it also like clicked so many things that as a kid I was exploring and I was feeling, oh, maybe I'm just crazy. I'm just making it up. And then so many years later, actually feeling it and touching it, uh, it was just confirming too many things for me. And uh, I was really amazed by the fact uh, that this uh, energy that, you know, it's very ridiculed in a sense by our society also, you know, some time ago, it was even more. And um, it's something so so tangible, so real, we can touch. And so I was, okay, how come nobody's speaking about this? This is real, you know, this can do real things. And, um, and yes, from the beginning, the practice of Qigong really enabled me to move and unlock uh, many things uh, in my life and in my own, especially in myself, you know, in, in my inner world. And uh, so, yeah, then I wanted more. So then just one year later, uh, I was already on my first trip to China. So, yeah, it has been inspiring and it has been my passion ever since. Yeah. And how did that go for you when you first uh, decided, okay, I'm going to China. I'm going to go train in a temple on a mountain. Uh, When you got there, how did... uh... How did that go for you? Well, um, I think a big uh, helping factor was the fact that I really disliked school and studying. And so I simply didn't want to go to the university so bad that this kind of gave me the strength to <laughs> to rather go on the other side of the planet. And of course, uh, the inspiration uh, I got from the Qigong uh, was also very strong and very powerful. And so, yes, I just jumped on that plane um, without really knowing what I was doing. And uh, when I arrived there, I was just so scared. I was really, literally, also because when you see it on the internet, well, it seems like you are going to a place and there's going to be nobody speaking English and you're going to be freezing on top of a mountain. and Well, actually, this is more or less how the temple is, a little bit. But my first experience were a bit more soft than the temple. I was in some Kung Fu academies in Budang. And uh, yes, it was uh, very good uh, for me to start to enter into this world. I was really thirsty for answers. You know, I was, okay, I want to find out the secrets about this energy thing and, you know, how to work with it. And and so I was really, really curious, looking for many people, for different teachers. And it took a long time, actually, before uh, I found actually the temple. And well, when I found out, it was uh, really amazing. I was supposed to go back home and to uh, go back to university. And at that time, uh, when I found out the temple and the possibility to learn so much about, you know, Taoist, Taoist medicine and all this energy and spirituality. 
from this person that really intrigued me so much. Uh, yeah, I just uh, decided to put everything on the side and to dedicate a few years to this. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, yeah. So practice theme Qigong regularly, like you've been doing for so many years. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted your life? Yeah, uh, uh, difficult to say again because uh, it has done so in so many different ways. I mean, um, you know, in every period, uh, you know, you need something different, and uh, the practice can be a very efficient tool to help you to find out. Well, first of all, what it is uh, that you know your deeper self is somehow asking for that that thing that life wants you to learn in a certain sense in that period and also it's a great tool to then start to actually uh, manifest and integrate this thing that uh, that you need the first biggest thing for me uh, in my in my time in china i think was simply the uh, understanding of the fact that i could uh, take my life in my hands that i was not I didn't have to be a, a victim of the circumstances, of my conditioning, of you know where I was born and everything else. Uh, I used to be very lazy before uh, going to China, and uh, yeah, also I think also I was very discouraged by school because I was not going well at school, and so I thought, you know, I, I'm kind of you know good for nothing kind of thing. And so the first big thing that I had to prove to myself when I went to China was that I had the strength to do it, to choose to make my own life. And of course, the temple and Shifu helped me massively in, in accomplishing this. And since then, it has been completely different. You know, there are some steps in your life that makes completely change the game in a sense. And so, yeah, from there, uh, I feel much more that I've been, you know, writing my own story. So that was definitely the first big, big chunk of work. Yeah. Wow. So mm -hmm. all this training has given you a lot of inner strength, uh, more confidence. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's made you also find your your life path. So mm -hmm. that's uh, that's pretty amazing. Um, and we've been talking a lot about, you know, how it gives you energy, empowerment. Um, mm -hmm. for, do you think for people who are tired a lot, um, mm -hmm. that this could be a practice that could really help them come out of this and be more energetic uh, and feel more alive? Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. And uh, even more, uh, uh, it can be very good to make them understand why they are so tired. For example, you know, we all have our problems. Maybe somebody's too tired. Maybe somebody's too stressed. Maybe somebody, you know, we have all sorts of uh, issues, you know, as humans. And um, yeah, definitely these kind of practices can really help you to understand why, you know, what is the root behind. Maybe, for example, I'm always tired because I need to rest, but I don't manage to rest because I don't allow myself to or whatever. There can be so many different dynamics and they are so unique uh, for each one of us. Um, so, I mean, in the end, the work is yours. The practice is only a tool that is giving you an instrument to, to, to carry on this introspection, this exploration, uh, but definitely can help a lot. So, so yeah. Yeah, uh, there's some uh, someone at the temple uh, with me when I came there uh, mm -hmm. who had the same problem as you. Uh, she was always yeah. overtraining. Um, yeah. Me was the opposite. I was always very tired because uh, I have a mm -hmm. problem with my immune system. And I yeah. talked with uh, Li Shifu about it. And uh, he had me take a few um, Chinese uh, medicinal herbs like Jingzang and a few others. Mm -hmm just to help me get that little boost to start uh, the training correctly. And um, actually once I started really practicing much more my um, internal chi, um, mm -hmm. I didn't need those medicinal plants anymore because 
I, I had the work that was already being done at that time and that was healing my body and that was helping me just feel much more uh, awake and uh, uh, energetic. So yeah, yeah, I think you're right. There are like several reasons and it's interesting to go and discover why so that you know which way you need to to get better. But um, uh, I, Qigong for me definitely helped a lot. And um, it was funny because um, I had started like practicing, uh, feeling my energy a long time ago. And then mm -hmm. I, um, I couldn't feel it anymore for like a couple years. Uh, yeah. I think that, you know, we, what we're talking about with the problem of like blocking yourself, you know, and I just, I couldn't feel it. And uh, I remember one day we were practicing Qigong and mm -hmm. we were doing the standing meditation where you just, you know, have that like ball in front of you and you're just standing and um, your, your hands, they're like this far apart. They're not touching, they're, all, they're, they're nowhere near each other. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that all of a sudden I was like, why are my fingers touching, you know? And mm -hmm. I opened my eyes and they're like nowhere near each other. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I was so excited, <laughs> you know. Um, I think that being able to feel your your internal energy circulate correctly, um, it works on so many things besides healing your 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 body, uh, your and I mean feeling more alive. And it also affected me emotionally. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe you could explain a little bit about that. How, how did the qigong affects us emotionally? Okay. Wow. Okay. First of all, amazing. You have touched like some, so many like really interesting and important points. Thank you for sharing your experience, uh, Brittany. And um, uh, first of all, I just want to comment the fact that um, I really agree with you that, and I see how beautiful is this process because uh, how Chinese medicine really uh, helps you and supports you in your own, uh, in your own uh, healing journey, in a way that uh, in the end we heal ourselves, and the doctor and the methods and the medicine, the herbs in your case, is just there to support us. And uh, tools as qigong are something that we do on ourselves, and that's why also it's so empowering, you know, because it's coming from us, you know. Um, so uh, going back to your question uh, about the, the emotions. Um, well, um, from the Taoist perspective, uh, the emotional level, uh, the physical level and the mental level, let's say, uh, are considered part of the same uh, thing. This, um, they often use this uh, structure divided in three parts. Um, and they see it as one only substance, one only energy that takes uh, different types of states. Uh, for example, the energy can become more dense and turn into matter, can become very subtle and turn into ideas or concepts or, you know, uh, something that is more on the unmaterial. And the emotional is uh, somehow at least our, I understand it is something in between the physical and the non-physical level. Uh, it relates more to this middle ground that connects uh, the, the material and the non-material. Um, and so it is a lot actually on the level that energy uh, and Qigong works with. It is a lot on this middle level, you know, uh, emotions, for example, they are uh, something that you cannot touch but there are something that has a very physical and very concrete effect that we can notice. And um, of course, uh, with the Qigong, uh, we move, we transform, we affect uh, the, the condition, the state of our physical body, the condition we change, uh, the thoughts we have in our mind. And all of this uh, kind of uh, changes the environment uh, where our emotions uh, are. So it really changes the quality of our uh, emotional body. Uh, really, in the Qigong practice, uh, 
a lot of the work happens directly on the emotional level first to then affect the other levels. For example, uh, when we connect with the energy of nature, of the sky, of the tree, for example, we do so, I think, a lot from an emotional type of language, in a sense, trying to understand how uh, the sky, how the tree feel somehow. And the Qigong really develops a very strong emotional sensi sensitivity to be able to understand uh, various quality of energy or various quality of emotion. And so uh, with this practice, we will be able to individuate different qualities inside of ourselves and understand which ones do resonate, which ones do not resonate, which one uh, maybe I would need more of, of this quality to uh, harmonize my field. Maybe this quality is a bit excessive or maybe this quality is counterproductive. And so the practice really gives us the tool to become more aware of the various components of our emotional field and gives us the power to regulate and to um, correct and harmonize this field. So yes, in a sense, it's really like an alchemy of different qualities of different emotions. Uh, so yes, this is one of the central aspects of the practice. It's interesting that you're talking about like um, the cycle of nature, how, I mean, how um, this work is completely linked to how nature works. Um, mm -hmm. Because I remember when we were training, we would get up before the sunrise and then we would practice Qigong with the sunrise. And, and it was important yeah. to live with like, yeah, the cycle of nature. And I feel like sometimes we're completely disconnected to that in our society. And is that maybe why we feel so unbalanced now? Well, definitely it's one of the main reasons uh, for sure. I mean, uh, for sure, many of, of you, of the people listening would agree that uh, humanity is like very, has somehow managed to isolate itself and to put itself, uh, not really, but at least from our perspective, in another level, in another place compared to all the living uh, beings of this planet. And uh, this kind of uh, separates also us uh, from the understanding of, of our own nature. So in the practice of Qigong, um, yes, we learn, we, we learn to connect to and receive teachings from uh, nature. It is uh, the most important teacher that we have, uh, the nature inside of us, and of course, the nature of the natural world uh, that contains so much information that really uh, it's necessary for our emotional maturity and balance. You know, we need to learn uh, humility from the forests. We need to learn, like, uh, you know, there, there is a certain emotional intelligence that the nature has. Uh, for example, the tranquility that nature can have and the serenity, the, the clarity. Um, there is so much that we should learn from our family, from, you know, nature is our family in a sense. And if we are separated from it, it's like we are separated from a, from a part of ourselves, you know. So definitely it is fundamental to retract uh, the lines that connect us uh, with nature. And in this way, we can be more whole and also more wild, more complete. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I definitely think that Qigong is much more uh, powerful and complex than what most people think it is. And um, yeah. actually, there, there's a question I've been asked quite a few times, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's interesting to, to answer this here, um, because people, they... they don't know much about this. I mean, everyone, I mean, most people have heard of Qigong and Tai Chi and stuff like that, but they don't know, like they asked me, what is the difference between Qigong and Tai Chi? Maybe you could explain this for those people who keep asking. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the Tai Chi and Qigong FAQs. 
which <laughs> one of the questions you are asked to answer a lot of time. Because of course, it's a point that generates a lot of confusion. And so I will try to give a, as much simple as possible answer to this question. So on to make it understandable, uh, we could say that Tai Chi is a type of Qigong because Qigong is a very broad and wide uh, spectrum of practice, while Tai Chi is a more specific practice. We could say Tai Chi is a type of Qigong, or we could also say that Tai Chi is a cross, is, a, uh, is a something that the point of, uh, uh, yeah, of crossing between uh, Qigong and Kung Fu. Kung Fu also is not one martial art, uh, it's the same as Qigong, it's not one practice, Kung Fu is all the martial practices uh, that come from China that are called Kung Fu. So, so yes, Tai Chi is a specific practice which has uh, specific requirements that include uh, martial movements. Um, and it is very unique because it is a, a very specific way of moving that wants to imitate in a sense uh, the whole, the one. So Taiji in Taoism is a state of creation where everything exists as one before the separation into the yin yang and following the separation into the 10,000 uh, myriad of things. And um, so it is uh, an energy work uh, type because of course you are moving your energy when you are doing Tai Chi. Um, it has more specific requirements because it is, in a sense, also somehow a, a metaphorical, a spiritual dance, uh, in a sense, uh, like a ritual dance, in a sense, because uh, it wants to imitate a certain, uh, a certain natural uh, phenomena to connect ourselves with that natural phenomena. Um, yes. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Tai Chi is quite a complicated and uh, practice, and uh, it requires a lot of effort. Well, also Qigong does, but in a sense, Tai Chi requires even more effort because you have to do so many things at the same time. Uh, there's so many movements and uh, difficult things to be focusing. Your arm should be synchronized with your leg. Your spine should be straight, and you know, one million things. And at the same time, you are meditating. You are feeling your energy and you are uh, you know uh, connecting to this level of the one uh, but yes i hope this makes a bit more uh, clear <laughs> yeah Hopefully, i think, I think uh, so yeah um if a person is wanting to more work like on healing their body uh which yeah. one would you advise them to do oof uh difficult to say Depends if they only had time to do one. one of them, which one would you try to get them to do? Um, <laughs> I guess I guess I would tell them to do Qigong normally, unless maybe they are a person who practice a lot of martial art and, uh, and they like it. And uh, they would consider Qigong too boring in that case, if they have a lot of martial art base, we could... You know, in the end, you are doing exactly the same work, right? If you're doing Qigong or if you're doing Tai Chi. But maybe some people like more Tai Chi because it has more movement to it. And especially people who are already into martial art or dance, maybe. And so if the more complex movement, uh, they are the type of person that resonate with that. They may be more, can enter a, a more deep state through the, the body. Then maybe for them, uh, Tai Chi could be more effective. But yeah, okay. it's a totally personal thing, really. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, Tai Chi, I think it takes more time, as you said, to uh, to master it. I mean, do you even ever really master it? You know, <laughs> but I mean, it, it just it yeah, takes... man. What is mastering it? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it does yeah. take longer to memorize the movements. But if you're someone who has a hard time doing uh, things that are calmer and where you're you're not moving much for a long time. I think, yeah, you're right. Tai Chi, like water Tai Chi would be uh, mm -hmm. better in that case. Um, yeah. Fire Tai Chi, also on the one, other hand, uh, that was more for like empowering yourself. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all the martial practices are also spiritual practices. And like you say, you know, to empower yourself, to give yourself strength, determination, a lot of qualities that are really fundamental in our life, even if, you know, it's a completely different approach. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start practicing Qigong? Um, I would, I, I would suggest to be very curious, uh, to try to experiment by themselves, to look in different places, uh, you know, to be playful because it's really, uh, it's, if we can tap into that uh, childlike curiosity, uh, that's where this practice really becomes powerful, I think. So, yes. It is, uh, we should not just stick to one thing and do what we are told and, you know, but really be curious and, uh, and explore and playful. That would be my advice. That's good advice. Or they can just go and check out your Spirit Arts uh, uh, YouTube channel. Yeah, of course. <laughs> where you have lots of videos already on, on that subject. Uh, um, yeah, hopefully it can be it can be of uh, interest and help to to someone. Yeah, um, but um, right now, what we're going to do is um, you you said that you would do a guided meditation. Uh, oh work, yeah, worse. So um, uh, could you um, like say what kind of meditation are you going to do and uh, uh, you know share that with us? Okay, so little introduction about the medita- the guided meditation. So yes, uh, we were speaking with Brittany to finish this uh, beautiful uh, um, chat with a little guided meditation. So I was thinking to do something rather simple and accessible. Uh, it would be something to align ourselves with our central channel, to bring our ourselves back to ourselves, and uh, in a simple way, uh, give us a taste of how uh, with Qigong we can connect with the natural energy around us. So yeah, that would be it. Uh, if there is something more you would like to say, or we can just jump straight into it. I think we can jump uh, straight into it. Let's go for it. Ah. <sighs> Okay, so first of all, you can take a moment to make yourself comfortable. Possibly with your spine straight, or with your body relaxed. And at first we will just take a few deep breaths. The breath is naturally becoming longer, deeper, and thinner. without effort, in a comfortable, in a pleasurable way. In a way that allows our body to relax deeper. And as we continue to breathe deeply, we observe how this type of breathing naturally brings ourselves back, back to our physical body.
back to the here and now. Back home. So with tranquility, calmly, we begin to observe our body as we breathe deeply. Relaxing, releasing, sinking. Sinking deeper into our own body. turning our gaze inwards, our inner universe begins to turn on. Our inner space with our emotions, with our state becomes more evident to us. simply observing and contemplating our current state with the various emotions, with the various qualities which are present in it at the moment. Breathing deeply. As we observe our inner state, we maintain ourselves aligned, present along the central line of our physical body. Like if we are perceiving everything from this point of view, from the central line of the body. And from here, we can observe all the marvelous inner universe that we have inside. Simply breathing, allowing the various energies which are present in our inner world to naturally move how they please, how they wish, giving them space, open to express, to move around, to reposition themselves. in a way that allows them a better, a more complete, a more full, a more joyful expression of their own nature. It doesn't matter if we understand or we do not understand what is happening inside of us. It can be very intuitive. It doesn't have to be something rationally graspable. So as we give more space for our inner world to express, we start to direct our attention, not only at our physical body, but also at the space that is surrounding it allowing our inner world to expand, express outside of ourselves, to gain more space, 
we are now not only occupying our physical body, but our consciousness is starting to expand around us. And I invite you to expand it further, more big, leaving more space for these energies to express and to move around. Starting to connect to the qualities, to the energies that are present in the space that surrounds us. Starting to touch the space that surrounds us. As we continue to expand beyond the limits of our room, outside in the open space. Expanding ourselves horizontally in all directions and vertically up to the sky and down in the ground. We continue to breathe deeply. Allowing ourselves to connect in a very intuitive way to this that is around us without expecting, without trying, just letting whatever emotion, quality, image come to us from this expanded space, this open sky, this open air, this natural world. And from here, in a very intuitive way, we allow ourselves to be touched by the natural energy surrounding us. We allow our inner world to communicate with the natural energy surrounding us. To move freely, to flow, to mix one into the other. And in this movement, we allow our energy body to do whatever movement it sees fit according to its own intuition, to its own intelligence. We allow ourselves to let go whichever quality our energy body feels that would be beneficial, that would be healthy to let go. in the amount that our energy body feels. Releasing into nature. We allow ourselves to receive from the natural energy whatever quality that our energy body feels thirsty of. Whatever quality our energy body feels, it will be nourishing, it will be resonant to integrate. Whatever quality would allow our energy body to express in a more wholesome, in a more complete, way, allowing more of its inner nature to express in all of its beauty.
we already know what type of movement is good for us to do. And we simply allow ourselves to do it. For a few more breaths, we continue this process, allowing our energy body to rearrange, to expand, to, to collect, to release, to clean. And we observe our energy body slow by slow, taking shape into this more empowered, more realized, more wholesome, more vibrant, more bright, more coherent. state. In a state that is more in harmony with us. Taking a few deep breaths. We allow this energy to settle down. To penetrate inside our physical body, sinking down, being recorded in the memory of our physical body. Allowing this more complete, more harmonious, energy vibration to become our new normal energetical expression. Letting it sink into the body for a few more breaths. Gently, pleasurably. feeling what it implies in our vibration, in our state, in our emotional state, in our thoughts, in our everyday actions. And in our reactions. We imagine what it means to be this. Taking a few last deep breaths. Integrating even more this energy into our body and especially into our lower abdomen. We are confident in the natural transformation process, growing process that we are going through. We have faith in its continuous movement toward a more complete, more expanded, more harmonious, and always dynamically changing, readjusting energetical state. Closing all of the energy, sealing it into the lower abdomen. We take a deep breath in and breathe out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out.
and with a lot of appreciation for the wisdom and the love of the natural energy surrounding us and blossoming inside of us. Humbly, we close the space of practice. Slowly, when you're ready, you can open your eyes again. Mm. <laughs> well, thank you for this guided meditation. It was amazing. Um, uh, thank you so much. Brittany. Very powerful. And nice. also, um, thank you for answering all uh, the questions uh, about Chico. Yeah. It was a pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you all of all of the people who are listening uh, for being here with us. I'm really happy to be sharing uh, these things with you. Yeah. Um, if you guys are interested in watching um, Julio's videos or going to check out his website to see when he's having his uh, online classes, well, I'll leave all the links down below so you can go and check that out. And also thank you to you guys for listening and um, have an absolutely beautiful day.